What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be my preview and prediction of the upcoming Notre Dame versus Ohio State game. Coming up here in week one, my goal is to make three of these prediction style videos each and every week and then do a recap video uh, after each weekend. But we'll see how that actually plays out. I don't want to make any promises on that. That's just the goal. But let's go ahead and get into this specific game breakdown. So a quick intro into this game. These two teams are in very different yet somewhat similar spots heading into next season. Notre Dame enters year one under Marcus Freeman with a brand new starter at quarterback as well. And Tyler Buckner, Buchner, Buckner. I'm going to go with Buckner. I'm not exactly sure how to say his name, to be honest, so I apologize for that. Um, but that in and of itself brings a lot of unknowns and uncertainty to this team. However, they are still one of the most talented teams around. And the expectation at Notre Dame is always to compete at the absolute highest level of the sport. The defense should be good once again under Freeman. But the question will be how good. Because on the other side of the ball in this game, Ohio State has some legit freaks. I mean, legit freaks. C.J. Stroud returns and is a bona fide Heisman favorite. Travion Henderson is one of the most talented running backs in the country, and Jackson Smith and Jigba is arguably the best wide receiver in the country, and those are just like the top of the line, guys. They have dudes at receiver going like 7-8 deep. Their running back room is incredibly deep. I mean, their offense in particular is absolutely insane. Now, the defense is the question for Ohio State. As new defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles takes over for a unit that really severely underperformed for their talent level last season. Now, if you look at their numbers, they weren't atrocious as a whole, but in big games, particularly games like Oregon and Michigan, they really struggled, particularly on key third downs. They just could not get off the field and couldn't get plays when they needed them. There was very simple assignment breaks. Run defense was a problem all year. So, you know, Knowles takes over for that unit that was plagued with a lot of issues last season. And he has an outstanding reputation, but his on-the-field results, you know, don't quite match what that is. They're not bad results by any means, but they don't quite match his reputation if you look at the entire course of his career. Not to mention just the stresses of implementing a brand new system and scheme to a team with as high of expectations as Ohio State is going to have. So overall, Notre Dame has a lot of questions across the roster as a whole, predominantly on offense, but there are question marks on their defense as well with a lot of movement on the roster. Um, but at quarterback is the big question there, is, is, is what is Tyler Buckner really going to be for them? Whilst Ohio State is mostly a known commodity at this point, and, you know, the defense is where all the questions are going to be there. And there are some question marks for sure. You know, we don't exactly know what the scheme's going to look like. We don't know who exactly is going to be playing where. Don't know what the rotations are going to be, things like that. The red zone offense could also use some improvement. Ohio State was notorious last season for being dominant between the 20s. But then once the field kind of tightened up, they were still very, very good. But they weren't quite as dominant there. So when they were playing the elite level teams, especially teams like Michigan, They'd get into the red zone, and then they would boggle down and struggle, have to settle for a lot of field goals and things like that. So that is really the big overall points to look at. Let's go ahead and get into the stats for this game. And I'll be using last year's stats since it is week one, and we just don't have anything else to go on. So yes, I know that these aren't the most relevant to this season. But they're all we have at this point, and honestly, they still tell a pretty good story about a majority of what we're going to see. So looking immediately at the offensive stats here, you can see Ohio State was first in points per game last year, averaging almost 46 points a game, which is crazy. And you can see a lot of that came through the air. 381 passing yards a game. That was third in the entire country. 46 touchdowns, only eight interceptions. Absolutely insane numbers as a team there. They were third in passing efficiency. And really, I mean, that's all crazy numbers. Their, their passing offense was absurd. Now they had guys like Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and Jackson Smith and Jigba last year, but I promise you their receiving core is going to be just as good, or at the very least very comparable this year, um, and, and with C.J. Stroud back for another year as well. I fully expect that passing game to pick up exactly where it left off. I foresee no drop-off there, to be honest. The only issue their passing game ran into was with their offensive line when they played elite defenses, particularly like a Michigan. 
you could see some pass rush issues start to rear their head. But they weren't major issues. I mean, you see they're ranked 16th in total sacks allowed last year. It's not amazing, but that's pretty dang good. I mean, that's top 20. And for that to be the concern on the offense is, is really telling of how good this offense was last year. Now, looking on the Notre Dame side of things, still 35 points per game is very good. 18th in the country, that is nothing to sneeze at by any means. They got it done a little bit differently, though. Still more pass-heavy than run-heavy, 282.5, basically 283 passing yards per game. That was good for 19th in the country. 30 passing touchdowns and 10 interceptions, so two more interceptions and 16 less touchdowns than Ohio State. But that's not really an indictment on Notre Dame. It's more just to exemplify how outstanding Ohio State's passing offense was. They were 29th in passing efficiency, so again, not amazing, but a very good passing offense. Not something that you would, you know, take lightly by any means. And the real problem with the Notre Dame passing offense, if you look there, that sacks allowed ranking, 97th in the country. And I don't know how much talk it really gets because Notre Dame historically always has a very good offensive line. Their offensive line last year was a problem. They, they had some real issues up front. And, and honestly, we'll probably see that carry over into this year. For their sake, we're going to really have to hope that it doesn't carry over because if it does this game could have some real problems because if they cannot protect you know their, their new quarterback they're going to have some real issues there I do expect it to improve as more experience and all rolls through but still definitely a big cause for concern I mean again we're talking about Ohio State that kind of being their concern they were 16th Notre Dame was 97th so so that really kind of shows you the disparity there Running the ball, a similar story. Both teams weren't as prolific running the ball as they were passing the ball, but still Ohio State the better of the two at 180 yards per game. That's 47th in the country versus 143 yards per game for Notre Dame, which is 79th in the country. Rushing touchdowns were very similar, 23 to 24. Ohio State barely lost any fumbles at three, whereas Notre Dame lost about six. So running the ball last season as a whole, was not the focal point for either of these teams. However, for Ohio State, it was very important because they hit a lot of home run runs that way, and that was the bread and butter of the offense. They knew with how prolific their passing game was, their run game was going to be treated kind of lightly. They were going to see a lot of light boxes, and it was imperative that they could run on those. And they did. They did really well. I mean, efficiency-wise, their running offense was way better than 47th, to be honest. Notre Dame, slightly different, but still same kind of story with their running offense. Again, the offensive line was kind of a, a hampering there. But for this upcoming game in particular, I think it's going to be absolutely vital that Notre Dame is able to run the football for a variety of reasons. One, time of possession, huge that Notre Dame can run the ball to, to, to win time of possession in this game. Two, you got to protect your young quarterback. I mean, I know last year they had a very good passing offense, and ideally you like to replicate that heading into this year, but you got a brand new head coach. You don't know how much that's going to matter, but the brand new quarterback thing is vitally important there. That could really, really, really affect these passing numbers for Notre Dame. And so early on, especially in a game on the road like this, that they're going to be you really want to get that run game going, calm everybody down, and have a nice you know, setup for your offense to work in. That's going to be vitally, vitally important here. Third down percentage, Ohio State once again towards the top of the country, second at 53, almost 53% conversion rate on third down. That's amazing. Notre Dame's was also really good at 43%, 37th in the country. Obviously not to the extent that Ohio State's was. Nobody had the offense to the extent that Ohio State had last year in a lot of ways. But still, decent on third down. That's going to also be vital in this game, which again goes back to that running. If you can stay on track and get into third manageables instead of third longs, throw when you want to instead of throw when you have to, those kind of things are going to help this Notre Dame offense a lot in this game where they are big underdogs. And they are underdogs for a reason because Ohio State can put up points in bunches even if the run game and all that's not working well they can be in third nine and be just fine and take deep shots and score and and absolutely light you up regardless just because of how explosive they are Notre Dame's not going to have that same level of explosivity so they have to be much more efficient on every single down so that third down percentage to extend those drives work the field position game keep your time of possession up very important red zone percentage another thing that I think will be vitally important here Ohio State had a very good red zone scoring percentage at almost 92%. That was 14th in the country. 
Their problem was a lot of times they settled for field goals against very good teams. Now, against, you know, a lot of the middling teams, you're not going to see it. For a team as good as Ohio State, you're not going to see it against those kind of teams. But when they played the Michigans and things of that nature, you saw a lot of times they bogged down in, you know, in the red zone. Again, between the 20s, they were dominant. Once you get to the red zone, things tighten up, and, and they bogged down a lot. They settled for a lot of field goals. If Notre Dame can cause them to do that here and cause them to settle for some of those field goals instead of getting those touchdowns, things could look really, really good for them as far as just hanging around in the game. If Ohio State is converting all of their red zone trips into touchdowns, Notre Dame's going to have some real problems. On the flip side of that, Notre Dame has to be able to convert their red zone trips to touchdowns. They really need to maximize all of their opportunities here because they're not as good of a team overall as Ohio State is. So when they get in the red zone, they have to absolutely maximize that opportunity, get seven out of that. They can't be settling for threes consistently. Both teams were pretty good at it last year. Ohio State much better than the Notre Dame, but definitely a swing point in this game that I think could really, really turn the tide. Time of possession, both teams were pretty similar. The rankings are, are, are you know, differentiated by seconds at, at this point. Both of them right around 29 minutes. Again, I think in this particular game, Notre Dame has to win time of possession. If Ohio State's winning time of possession, I don't think it bodes well for Notre Dame at all. So just overall, some big takeaways from the offense. Again, Ohio State, absolutely dominant offense last year. I think that's going to carry over again this year. Maybe some time of possession concerns. If they score really quick, maybe their defense wears down. But again, I just don't see it. I mean, they did that last year, and they were just fine, and they still run the ball very well. Their offensive line is going to be huge here because if they can keep C.J. Stroud clean and run the ball decently well, I don't see any way Notre Dame has a shot. So the offensive line is going to be very important for them. For Notre Dame, their offensive line is equally as important. They cannot let their their brand new starting quarterback get sacked a lot, have a lot of pressure on him. They have to make him as comfortable as they can. And with that, they have to establish the run. If Notre Dame can't establish the run, I don't see this game going well for them at all. They really need to be able to move the ball on the ground, which we'll get to. That was the big way that Oregon pulled off their upset, their upset against Ohio State last year. Notre Dame should follow a very similar blueprint, in my opinion, if they want to pull that off. And then the Notre Dame passing game with their new quarterback, what is that going to look like? We're really not sure at this point. It's going to have to be efficient. There can't be a lot of turnovers and things like that. I mean, you really can't have any turnovers in a game of this of this caliber, to be honest. If Ohio State's offense is what we think they're going to be and what they were last year, you're going to have to be very efficient. You're going to have to be able to throw on third downs when you absolutely have to. And ideally, you're going to have to be able to throw downfield and find some explosives mixed in. So moving on to the defensive statistics now. If you look here, this is where things start to look a little bit better for Notre Dame. They were 14th in points allowed last year, averaging a little under 20 points per game allowed. Uh, 62nd in passing yards allowed, which was not great at 224. But if we go ahead and jump down to passing efficiency defense, they were 22nd. So that kind of makes up for that 62nd rank there. They played a lot of very high pro profile Passing offenses, and they saw a lot more passing attempts than a lot of other teams that will be ranked higher in just raw yardage. So a, a, a slightly better number there for them in the efficiency than it is on the, the total yards per game. They had 15 interceptions, which is good for 17th of the country. That's really solid. It's not anything crazy, but again, solid. And they had 41 sacks last year, which was good for 13th in the country. So overall, a pretty good passing defense. Not anything crazy good, but good enough to hang in there even against the likes of an Ohio State. Now, they're not going to be able to shut them down with those kind of numbers, but they're going to be able to slow them down, and it's not going to be like, for example, Michigan State, who we thought may have had a good shot against Ohio State last year. Their passing defense was just so bad they'd never had a good shot at that game, and when they got on the field with Ohio State, they threw the ball all over them. That's not likely to happen here for Notre Dame, at least based upon last year's production. Now, if this upcoming year they, they drop off, this would be a different story. Based upon last year's production, this Notre Dame defense should be just fine against the pass. Um, looking on the flip side of that, Ohio State averaged a little under 23 points per game allowed. That was 31st in the country. So overall, not horrible there. Not great, but not horrible. Passing yards per game, 246. That's 87th in the country. That's not very good. But again, their efficiency was better than that shows. Still not a very good efficiency, though, at the 47th. For the amount of talent on the Ohio State defense to be hovering in the 30s and 40s and 50s and, and 80s and 90s or some of these ranks is not good enough. Now, it's not, you know, horrid. It's not like Oklahoma under Lincoln Riley or anything, 
but it's not great. It, it, it needs to be better for the way they recruit defense as well. They had 13 interceptions. That was good for 38th. Again, decent, but not amazing. That's really the way to describe the Ohio State pass defense from last year. Decent. You know, not anything that's going to completely lose you a game, but not anything that's going to win you a game either. Just decent. Same with the sacks. 37 sacks is good for 25th in the country. That's pretty good, but it's not anything crazy either. On the running side of the ball, they were very good in rushing yards per uh, per game allowed at 24th in the country with 128-ish yards per game allowed. That, that That's pretty good. That's not anything, again, similar to the past defense. Not anything amazing, but it's pretty good. The problems arise when you look at that third down defense and those red zone defense numbers. 92nd in the, in the nation in third down defense, allowing conversions 42% of the time. That's far too often. That extends drives. That keeps your high-powered offense off the field, and, and, and that keeps your defense on the field and gets them to wear down. It allows other teams to get comfortable. It's not good. It also flips field position, things like that. It's not a good thing to be that low on the third down defense, and that is a particular area in this game. Like I mentioned for Notre Dame's offense, they need to be able to convert third downs. Ohio State's defense needs to be able to prevent that from happening in this game if they want to have a good shot at winning. Now, for them, they don't need everything to go perfect for them to win this game. That's the luxury of being the big favorite. But still, you want that to work. And then red zone defense again. If they give up touchdowns every time Notre Dame gets into the red zone, this game's going to be a lot closer than if they can hold them to a couple field goals throughout the game. On the Notre Dame side of that... Same story, but they were much better at both. They were very good at third down defense last year. Tenth in the country, allowing only 32% of conversions. That is huge for this game. Because that can, at the very least, force Ohio State into making those explosives. Now, they're better than most anybody in the country at those. But still, force them to hit explosives. Don't just let them methodically move the ball. And and a lot of that comes from that sack number right there. That That was 41 sacks on the year. Getting pressure on the quarterback is very, very important. Stopping the run also helps you a lot to force third and long situations. They were a very good red zone defense as well, allowing points only 70, basically 79% of the time. Not anything crazy, but 36, again, pretty decent. They need to take that and expand upon that and really highlight and emphasize that in this game. That red zone defense needs to hold to three, not seven. Has to happen. If Ohio State's getting sevens instead of threes, it's going to be a long night for Notre Dame. And if Ohio State's converting a large percentage of their third downs, it's going to be a really long night for Notre Dame. Turnover margins, both teams were pretty, pretty good. I mean, 8th for Notre Dame, 13th for Ohio State at 11 and 10. Very good there. Those defensive touchdown numbers are basically irrelevant. Penalties per game, Notre Dame 5.7, Ohio State 6.5. Both teams in that same range. Again, penalties could rear their head here, but nothing from last year that really makes it super indicative other than maybe Notre Dame having a first-year head coach. Big takeaways from this one, Notre Dame passing defense was pretty good last year. It's going to be tested in a huge way in this game. They really, really need to, 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 to do at least good enough to limit Ohio State. Now, I don't expect their secondary to just match up with the Ohio State receivers. They're going to have to get a good pass rush and things like that. It goes back to what we were talking about with the Ohio State offensive line. Going to be really crucial there. Then the Notre Dame red zone defense. That is the next biggest important thing. If they can bow up and hold them to a couple field goals instead of touchdowns, that could make the difference in Notre Dame being in striking range late in this game. For the Ohio State side, the new defensive coordinator, what is that going to look like? How improved is the defense going to be? I think they will be improved, but in week one with the new system, you're going to see a lot of growing pains. I don't think they're going to be some dramatically better team overnight. I do think they will be better, though. Third down and red zone defense particularly are are big struggle areas for them last year. Third down defense is, I think, going to be vitally important in this game. I've already talked about how important the red zone is going to be on both ends of this. But third down defense, they have to be able to get Notre Dame off the field and and get their offense back on the field. They can't let Notre Dame drag out for long drives over and over and over again. And then lastly, just the big struggles from last season. What is that going to look like under the new D.C.? We've already kind of touched on that. But still, an interesting point to note nonetheless. So that takes us into the key matchups section. So these are just matchups that are vitally important, individual to that team. So for Notre Dame, the biggest matchup for them that I think is going to mean the most is their secondary and pass rush against Ohio State's wide receivers and offensive line. They have to affect C.J. Stroud. If C.J. Stroud is comfortable in the pocket, this game is going to be 
really, really bad for Notre Dame. They absolutely have to keep those receivers from just running free down the field and run with them, and their pass rush has to affect C.J. Stroud. If they don't do that, it's going to be a nightmare for them. So that is the most crucial matchup for Notre Dame. The second one is the lines of scrimmage. Now that goes hand-in-hand hand with the pass rush, but on the offensive side of the ball, they have to establish the run. If they can't establish the run, you're going to put way too much pressure on a brand-new quarterback and Tyler Buckner, and you're not going to be able to get that time of possession. You're going to struggle on third downs, and you're going to be more turnover-prone through the year as well. All things Notre Dame cannot afford to do. They have to win time of possession. They have to be able to establish the run, and that's really the formula to beating this high-powered of an Ohio State offense keep them off the field. I mean, that's really what you're going to have to do, and that's won and lost at the line of scrimmage. Final matchup for Notre Dame, red zone scoring. I've talked about this a lot at this point. They need to be able to get seven instead of three, and they have to keep Ohio State at three instead of seven. That's the only way they're going to be able to hang around in this game. For Ohio State, their most important matchup is just C.J. Stroud against everybody. C.J. Stroud is going to be their best player, arguably, but he's going to be the most important player, undoubtedly. So he needs to be very good. I fully expect him to be very good. But if they can keep him comfortable, if they can give him open targets and he gets in a rhythm, they're looking great. If C.J. Stroud has a great game, I don't think Notre Dame quite has the firepower to just match that. And so if C.J. Stroud goes off, I think it's looking really, really strong for Ohio State. Second biggest matchup is just their improved defense. And I put the question mark because how improved? What is it going to look like? And how is it going to match up against the Notre Dame offense? It has a lot of questions of its own heading into week one. If that matchup goes well for Ohio State and, and they, you know, they get third down stops, they get off the field, they cause a couple turnovers or, or they put some pressure on Buckner, things like that, then it's gonna, you can easily see the snowball effect of their high-powered offense. If it doesn't go their way and you see it really start to struggle, then you know maybe you could see Notre Dame hanging around there, extending some third downs, keeping themselves alive in the game, getting comfortable late into the game, and staying within striking distance because, again, they are a big dog here. Then the final big matchup for Ohio State is just dominant skill positions against the Notre Dame secondary and things like that. Ohio State has absolutely dominant wide receiver groups and running back groups. Those guys need to win their matchups. They need to flex their muscle. If they're not doing that, then the offense isn't going to operate as advertised, even with Stroud doing well. So, you know, if Notre Dame does manage to slow them down, call some negative plays here and there, things like that, you're going to need those explosives from your skill positions, and that, that's going to take them showing up and winning their one-on-one matchups. That's what Ohio State almost always does. They're going to have to do it again here. So those are the big matchups, in my opinion, in this game, which leads to the turning points. Now, these turning points are things that if they go the way of the team that they're assigned to, that is a huge turning point towards pushing them to a win. So... For Notre Dame, the biggest one is turning point one, win the lines of scrimmage. If Notre Dame can win both lines of scrimmage, then it looks really good that they may have a shot at getting a win here. If they can get pressure on C.J. Stroud, prevent Ohio State from really establishing the run, which is going to be first and foremost, because if they can just run the ball down your throat, you're going to have problems all night. But if they can get pressure on C.J. Stroud, keep him uncomfortable, maybe cause him to throw a, a, a bad pass, maybe get an interception, something like that, while at the same time protecting their quarterback, letting him get comfortable in the game, and establishing the run to extend those third downs, lengthen those drives out, win your time for possession, things like that, that is their path to victory, in my opinion. I think that is the biggest turning point for Notre Dame. Turning point two is in the very much same vein, protect Tyler Buckner. You cannot let him go to hero mode where he just has to do everything himself. You have to establish the run to protect him, and you have to make sure he's not getting just absolutely walloped in the backfield every single play. you got to block for him up front. you got to give him some open targets, and you got to give him some easy throws to get adjusted to the game. If you don't do that, you're going to have problems. So that's another huge turning point. If he's having turnovers or things like that, this game is going to get out of hand quickly. And the final one, again, goes hand-in-hand with that, run the ball. If Notre Dame runs the ball, they're going to be fine. If they can establish the run, drag things out again, that's their path to victory here. On the same token, if I could put a fourth one on here, it would be the red zone scoring on both sides of the ball. I've already talked about that at nausea at this point, but again, that's vitally important here. Works hand-in-hand with all of these other ones. For Ohio State, the big turning point, number one, dominating offense. If their offense is putting up 45 like they did on average last year, Notre Dame's not winning this game. 
I don't think Notre Dame can get to 50. I just don't. And I, I, I don't think that's that a crazy of a thing to say. If, if Ohio State can get into the 40s, I think this game is well at hand. If C.J. Stroud is comfortable and their skill position guys are rolling, then this game is looking absolutely perfect for Ohio State. They're a big favorite for a reason. Second biggest one, their improved defense. If their defense can, can be better than last year, particularly in the red zone and on third downs, then you're going to see, I think, this game start to swing and snowball on top of that dominating offense. Those two work perfectly together. Last one, protect the football. Another path for Notre Dame to victory is just to dominate the turnover battle. It's not something that you can predict. But on the Ohio State side of things, like, you know, look, don't force a pass on third down just to force a pass. Take a punt. You're the better team. You're going to be fine. Don't force something in there and cause unnecessary mistakes, you know. Protect the football, and, and things will be going your way. If Ohio State has a bunch of turnovers, then you can see this thing start to swing. They're not a turnover-prone team, though. I think that they will protect the football. But still, definitely a big thing to turn the game in their direction. So that brings me to my score prediction here at the end. And you can see here I have Ohio State winning this game 38-24. to 24. Now, the Vegas odds on this game, if you're curious, are Ohio State minus 17.5. And the over-under is 58 and a half. So I'm pretty close to what Vegas has this at. Um, I've got this going over by just a few points. And I have Ohio State not quite covering with a 14-point win instead of a 17 or 18-point win. I'm pretty confident in this. Now, I think Ohio State could also get to the 45 to 24 kind of range. And maybe their defense holds Notre Dame to 17 or something like that. That's kind of a plus or minus 7 on either end of this. If things go Notre Dame's way and they can really affect C.J. Stroud, get a turnover to really extend the time of possession. I still think they're going to struggle to hold Ohio State under 30. I think it just keeps them in a closer range. I think really best-case scenario for Notre Dame is you're within one score in the fourth quarter. I don't think that they're going to be a good enough team to come in here, and even if they play their A game, to just have a 10 or 15, 14-point lead on, on Ohio State. I just don't see that happening. Um, I've got my confidence on this at a 7 on a scale of 1 to 10. And again, that's on a week 1 scale. That's not an overall scale. Week 1 games are always incredibly hard to predict. I'm very confident Ohio State wins. I'm not so confident that they cover, to be honest. I think Notre Dame has the has the very distinct potential to keep this within the two-score range. But I also wouldn't be shocked if, if, if Ohio State won this by three, maybe even four scores, especially... Um, you know, depending on how Tyler Buckner performs at quarterback for them. That could really swing this game. Anyway, though, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know down below in the comment section where you guys agree and or disagree with me on this prediction video, as well as who you have winning and what the final score will be. As always, I am very, very interested to see you guys' feedback, particularly on these prediction-style videos. Also, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more college football content in the future. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.